As part of our weekly series here on Making the Case, we cover cases of our missing black women and girls in the hope that someone sees or hears something that can help bring a loved one home. So tonight we're covering the case of Sheena Gibbs. The 40-year-old from Chicago was reported missing on November 3rd. Sheena is a college graduate, a cancer survivor, and was active on social media before her disappearance. But her accounts have been silent for months and her family needs our help. I'm happy to have Sheena's aunt, Leela Tarver, with us tonight. Leela, thank you so much for coming on. Hi, thank you. So first tell me, how are you and your family holding up since um, Sheena's disappearance? Well, we're actually, um, we're holding on to hope and uh, our belief that we will find Sheena um, as every day goes by. It doesn't seem like that's gonna become a reality, but um, our faith is strong and we're, we're hoping and praying that um, she's gonna surface somewhere sooner than later. Well, take us back to November, um, please, when Sheena disappeared. I know that there are some details that you can't get into right now, but tell us when and how your family knew something was wrong. Well, basically, um, the, on November 3rd, because um, Sheena was her mother's um, power of attorney for her health care, and so Sheena had received a call saying that her mother was in the hospital. So she then in turn called me, or she texted me, I'm sorry, and said, mom's in the hospital. And she said a few more things, but then she said, I'll be down there tomorrow. So when tomorrow came, there was no Sheena, but I figured, well, maybe she's just gonna come in a few days. So I didn't really think much about it. Mm -hmm. But then when we tried calling her myself, her sister, other family members tried calling her and her phone was just going straight to voicemail. So we still just kind of held on to, okay, maybe she just can't come right now. But then when Thanksgiving came and went, that's when I said, okay, something's, something's up. And that's when I called and filed the missing person report. Now, was she supposed to fly in? Do, do you know she purchased a ticket? Normally, if she ever got on the flight? I'm sorry, yes. Um, normally when she visits here, she um, comes down on the bus. So, oh, I see. Yeah, so we, we don't know of her ever purchasing a bus ticket or anything or ever getting on a bus. Now, you mentioned that Sheena is, is big on social media uh, to one of my producers. And um, has her network of friends been helpful or, or supportive as you work to find her? Absolutely. I, I have uh, talked with some of her closest friends some that one that lives here, um, a couple that live in Chicago, and um, I just they either reached out to me or I found them on her her uh, Facebook page and reached out to them and um, they've been very cooperative. They've um, they've been helpful putting flyers up, uh, making calls to the detectives with information that they know about. So yeah big support. Are you familiar with, with who her friends are? Was she dating anybody that you knew about? Uh, she, she did date someone, um, but I can't really, I, I don't really know enough about that relationship to really elaborate on that. Um, but I do okay. know of some friends that she had, yes. Okay. Well, let's talk about the family's interaction with um, law enforcement. We reached out to the Chicago police um, for an update on this case and, and we didn't get a response, but have they been supportive and resourceful in your niece's, in your niece's case? Well, to be honest, um, we received a lot of uh, tips from total strangers that just, they saw the flyers and they either messaged me or they called the, the police department. And um, 
we, you know, let them know about what was going on and um, they took the information, but as far as whether they, they followed up on it, um, I can't really confirm that. Um, the detective that was assigned to her case had actually been out for a while, so we really weren't getting anywhere. Um, so yeah, we're, we're kind of feeling a little stuck right now because there's information out there, but there's really not a whole lot being done with that information. Mm -hmm. What was going on um, in Sheena's life right up until she disappeared? Um, was she happy? Could you tell that maybe something could have been weighing her down? It, tell us what she well, was feeling um, both physically and mentally at the time, if you know. Well, what I do know is Sheena was home. She was here in September. She actually stayed with me for about a week. Um, and primarily she came because she was concerned about her mother. We, we all are concerned about my sister because um, she's been sick for quite some time and her health had started deteriorating a little more than normal. Um, and so Sheena, out of concern, said she wanted to come down to see about her mom and initially even said she might even consider moving back here. And um, that was the plan. But um, she left after a week and went back to Chicago. And she said she was going to try to work some things out there and see if she can still find a job there because Keep in mind, um, Sheena was actually raised in a small town here in Iowa called Muscatine, which is, Davenport's not that small, but Muscatine's way smaller. So when she had the opportunity, she kind of kicked rocks and left and I couldn't blame her. <laughs> so she wasn't really like jumping up and down about the idea of moving back here, but she really loved her mom, loves her mom. And I know no one can tell me that she would just walk away and decide that, I, I'm not going to take care of my mom or I'm not going to check on my mom at least to see how she's doing. Mm -hmm. Well, Leela, can you tell us more about Sheena, who she is? Um, what are her interests? What did she enjoy doing? Well, um, I, I, from what I, I've heard, because I'm, I wasn't around Sheena a lot uh, as she was growing up um, until she developed into a nice young lady. Um, she likes dance, uh, African dance and um, different cultural type activities. She liked volunteering with uh, various organizations. She was very outgoing, um, just real funny. Um, just she did things just kind of on the spur of the moment as far as you know, um, for example, when she stayed with me, I had a little project that I had kept putting off and um, it was to, to paint. And so she went out in my garage, got the paint and started painting. And little did I know, she made a video saying, hi, this is Sheena's home improvement. And she's going around showing all my tools and everything, you know, and it was really funny if you watched it. Um, but um, people that usually from all the friends that I've talked to, when they met her, they just immediately just were drawn to her because she just has that kind of presence. And um, I don't know, and I just believe that she's the type of person that would give you the shirt off her back um, if you needed it. Well, we definitely hope that uh, our viewers, anybody that knows anything big or small, um, make contact and and help bring your niece home. Leela Tarver, thank you so much for your time and thank you for sharing Sheena's story with us. Remember, if you have any information about Sheena's case or any of the cases of missing black women and girls that we feature here on Making the Case, contact the Black and Missing Foundation by calling 877-972-2634. You can also reach out to them on social media or head to their website, bamfi.org.